All right, a new what's in my bag video. So I am in Hawaii right now and I've been away for just a couple of weeks. So although this is a what's in my bag travel edition, now I don't want you to be misled and think that this is the type of video where I'm talking about traveling as in backpacking around the world, that kind of thing. This is what I've packed for going away on a photography trip for just a couple of weeks. So we're not talking totally crazy lightweight stuff, but I thought it would be interesting to let you know a bit about my workflow and what I have with me. So let's start this video with the bags. Now I do not believe that there is one bag that fits all. So I have with me two bags. Now I would also like to say at this point, um, some of my videos I get comments saying that, oh, you know, this is a blatant advertisement and this, that and the other. Um, that's sometimes true, um, but I'm always honest um, about product placement, if you like. <laughs> um, so, for example, uh, a few weeks ago, I got that VW van. Um, and yeah, it, it was a bit of an advert for Volkswagen, but they lent me a van to go and do landscape photography. So obviously I'm gonna feature the van and talk about the van and plug the van as much as possible. Uh, now, a lot of companies contact me and wanna give me stuff. They wanna give me stuff to feature in videos and for me to use in videos. Um, and I would say about 90% of those offers I turn down. And that's because a lot of the stuff that these companies wanna give me is junk, it's absolute trash. Um, and I don't want to use it. Not only do I not want to use it, I don't want you to think that I'm, I don't want you to think it's good. Oh, Tom's using it, it must be good. No, absolutely not. So, in this video full of my kit, which I've taken abroad with me, a lot of the stuff I've bought with my own money. But some of the stuff has actually been given or lent to me. Now, the stuff that's been given or lent to me, I would not feature in this video if it was rubbish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little signal here every time an item is mentioned that I have not bought with my own money it's been given to me or lent to me but trust me it is still a top quality product and I promise you that I'm not using it for the sake of showing it in a video um, and you'll see you'll see anyway so let's start with the bags okay so when I go away or, you know, there's two types of activity. There's the photography that is a nice, gentle stroll, not too far from the car, perhaps some street photography, perhaps you go down to your local beach and take some photographs. And then there's the other type of photography, which is a lot more adventurous, where you need to carry more than just camera equipment. And for that, I have this absolutely amazing Manfrotto off-road bag. This was given to me by Manfrotto, but don't worry. If it was rubbish, I wouldn't use it. Because you all know I have my Low Pro Pro Rover, which is a fantastic bag, but that one is 45 liters. This one is 35 liters and has a few, well, it's slightly better than the Low Pro. Yeah, there's not much between them. It's a lot lighter. So therefore it's better for travel. Now what I do with this is I put this in my suitcase. It's incredibly lightweight and it has this internal compartment. Now this holds all your camera gear, your camera body and your lenses, okay? This can be removed as I've just done, obviously. Um, and when you remove this, what you end up with is a day bag. So you can actually use this if you're going on a hike without your camera gear. Obviously, if you're going on a hike with your camera gear, you put the um, insert in and you put all your camera gear in there. And then obviously you have this top section and that's where a few other bits like your filters, your spare jacket, your water, all that kind of stuff goes. You've also got pockets on the outside, lots and lots of storage, lots of straps. This isn't a bag review. This is just me saying I use that bag. It's fantastic. It's very lightweight, so it's good for traveling. Bag number two. Now this bag is a new bag. This bag is made by Lopro, and this is the Lopro Pro Tactic 450. Um, now I did a lot of research on bags because my other Lopro bag um, I found was too big and bulky for airline travel. Um, it never used to be a problem, but airlines are becoming a bit more strict now and you know, it was always a bit of a nightmare squeezing it in to the overhead compartment. So I needed something more compact, but equally as usable. So I did some research and I found this bag. Now this 
is a fantastic bag. Um, I bought this myself with my own money, Low Pro. Do not have, I'm not endorsed by them or anything. They, they, uh, no, they've got my money. Uh, why is it a good bag for travel? For travel, it's an excellent bag. Look, no external straps or anything hanging off. Um, it's like a shell. So it is what it is. The size you see is the size you get. It doesn't expand, but that is a good thing. Another excellent thing for travel, it's got this, it's got this waistband here. Now these um, are great when you're actually hiking and walking with your bag, but they're a nightmare for going through security and getting it into the overhead cabins because they flap around and they're sort of dead space. Now, this was a deal breaker for me. This is the very reason I bought this bag. It's removable. So we don't need that. Now we have a lovely compact bag with nothing, nothing other than the straps, which are fairly lightweight and thin anyway. Um, so this bag is cabin ready. It's also a decent size. Um, it's got a hard shell top, um, which is great because in there you can put, yeah, I don't know, bottle of water, bag of crisp sandwich if you're going on the plane, that kind of thing. Now you might be thinking, how does it hold your tripod and various other bits and pieces? Well, it comes with accessories. Now you can see on the bag that it's got some webbing around the side here, all around. So you've got these accessories, like for example, this thing here, you know, they, they strap on. Um, there's also some clips that hook on and you can clip things and it's completely customizable. Um, it's fantastic. It opens from the rear. Um, and that is where all of your camera gear goes in there you see and it will also carry a laptop see that laptop will go in there there's also a few other pockets on the inside the lid where you could put an ipad i've got my headphones a sharpie that kind of thing um so yeah holds all my gear and will go nicely on an aeroplane it also has side access so if you're one of those people who likes to swing your bag around your shoulder and pull your camera out you can do that from both sides it's not really anything i use um that's the bag brilliant bag absolutely amazing it comes with a good few accessories um right so let's talk about camera gear have my tripod it's not a travel tripod but it's carbon fiber so it's fairly lightweight and the head when i put this in my suitcase uh, it won't go in the hold obviously sorry not the hold it won't go in the cabin um, i removed the head and i just put this in the suitcase and that is my manfrotto tripod this is my uh mxh pro zero it's just a really nice arca swiss head all of this gear or most of this gear is going to be in the description i don't always remember the name of it um, but there you go, this 5D Mark IV, loaned to me by Canon. Now this video is shot after the other videos that are going to be on next week. So it's a bit confusing, do a bit of time hopping. Um, but the 5D Mark IV, so far, is, it's been phenomenal. For landscapes, 30 megapixels, touchscreen, GPS. Uh, bomber, absolute bomber. At the minute, it's got a 16 to 35mm f4 lens Mark II. That's great. I also have a 24 to 70 lens, which this is the Mark II. Uh, this is a lot lighter um, than the Mark I version. This is Canon's, not mine, but I'm hoping to buy it. This is my trusty 70 to 200 f4 non IS lens. I've had this for years. Really lightweight um, and absolutely essential so that's three lenses ranging from 16 mil to 200 and yes they all come with me in the in the cabin they all go in the bag um yeah spray and cleaning cloth and nothing special there now remember last month maybe two months ago i did a video about filters um so lee got in touch after seeing that video um and they told me about a bunch of filters that they had uh that they that I didn't have and I didn't mention that I didn't even know existed. So they sent me a bunch of stuff. Um, they sent me this pouch, 
which is cool. It's just a filter pouch, nothing special. I suppose the one good thing it's got is this little strap so I can hang it off my tripod. Um, it will also hang off my belt, but it's pouch is a pouch is a pouch. Um, it's not much different to my low pro one. Now this, this is Lee's 105 mil polarizer. Now I love my helio pan polarizer. I love it. I am in a deep relationship with that polarizer. But Lee told me that this polarizer can be used on the 16 to 35 mil lens at 16 mil with minimal to no vignetting. Um, so I can't remember if I've used this at 16 mil. I think I did, you know, I think I did. And I don't think there was much vignetting, so it's working, but I'll tell you what else is interesting. So you've got your hard edge graduated filters. You have your soft edge graduated filters. Lee have now a, let me see, is this the one? Yes. No, that's hard. Uh, so if that's hard, then this will be medium. Sorry, I don't know what order I've got these filters in. This is a medium edge graduated filter, medium edge. And that's actually quite interesting because when you use a longer lens, for example, say you put a hard edge filter on a 200 mil lens, that hard edge actually becomes quite soft. Um, so they do a, I think they do a really hard edge and they also do a medium edge. Um, and there have been times when a soft is too soft and a hard is too hard. So yeah, Lee have given me some filters to add to the ones I've already bought. So it's not like I've been giving them all for free. They just wanted me to try a couple, uh, but yeah, medium edge. And yes, I've used it and yes, they were exactly what I needed, so crazy. Um, right, this this is my cable release. Nothing special there. This is my Lee foundation holder. And this is a 15 stopper that comes in a separate case because this filter pouch holds 10 filters. And that's 11 filters, so. Um, but what you'll notice here is that even though I'm traveling, I still pretty much bring all of my full-size kit. Um, but don't worry. I do try and save weight elsewhere. Um, this, this is a battery bag. It's quite important to be organized when you're traveling. So it's not like you've, you're at home and you know where everything is. If you're going from hotel to hotel, then you need to, uh, you need to know where your stuff is and be organized. So this is just a bag full of batteries. I've got batteries for my camera here, batteries for my GoPro, batteries for my other camera, which is there. Batteries. Right. Do you remember or do you know Joe Allen? He's a fellow YouTuber. Now he did a what's in my bag video. Uh, I don't know when it was, maybe six months ago or something like that. And in his video, he recommended a plug bug um, for traveling. This is essentially an adapter that goes onto your MacBook charger um, and it comes in all universal plug sockets. Um, and the problem is what I find when traveling to a different country is bringing chargers and things like that. They take up a lot of space because you need your adapters, but you also have the big 13 amp plug socket on um, and wires and cables become troublesome. So I bought the plug bug just to make transporting my MacBook and charger a lot easier. So that is a plug bug. Does the Canon G5X have a 15 minute record cut off? Because camera stopped recording, apologies about that. Right, yeah, charging and all that. It's always, it's always quite heavy and you've got less cables. So I have a USB GoPro charger. I also bought a USB charger for my Canon G5X. This is great, you can charge your camera in the car. You can plug it into any USB charger like this. Um, it's just easier and better than bringing the 13 amp cable and converters. I've also got a USB charger for my Canon 5D Mark IV batteries. Uh, this will charge too. Now it takes longer to charge than your standard 13 amp one that we have in the UK. But again, you can charge it in the car, you leave it overnight. It's just, it's so lightweight and it does save a lot of space and a lot of faff. Um, so that's pretty much where I try to save weight. Uh, I have this, this is a pouch. This is just a simple pouch full of memory cards um, and spares basically. Oh dear, there goes my cloth, it's getting a bit windy. Uh, I can't say that. Hang on. 
Okay, right, we're, we're back, we're back. Sorry, the camera's falling, the wind's blowing, it's getting dark, so I'm gonna get through this as quickly as possible. What does I say? This is a pouch that holds memory cards. All memory cards are in a pouch because when I'm going from one bag to another bag, I like everything in its own self-contained bag, then there's no risk of me leaving anything behind. I just pick up these, put them from one bag into another, same with batteries, same with filters, same with everything. This, right, these. These are called Rycote Micro Wind Jammers. Now, you know when it's windy and you get that horrible wind noise, that yeah, you know. Um, these are great, these are little sticky pads that you put on top of the microphone of your camera. Great for vlogging. Um, I'd highly recommend these ones over any other. Bought these myself, obviously, they're not given to me. Um, because you get like, you get about 12 in a pack or something, so if they come off, you've always got spares. There are other wind muffy companies out there who only give you one, and that's, in my opinion, not good enough. Uh, right, let's talk about editing images and traveling and backing up and everything. Now, in the Canon 5D, oh, I should also mention I've got an L bracket on here. Always have the L bracket. Well, not always, but you know. Once you get an L bracket, you'll always have the L bracket, no matter where you go or what you do. It's amazing. In here, I've got two memory cards, okay? Both of them recording the same image. So the image is always going to be backed up onto two cards. I also have my lacy, rugged, four terabyte portable hard drive. Now this contains all of my Lightroom catalog files as well as every image I own. It's all on this. Um, also my Adobe Premiere um, files, you know, you know the things. Uh, yeah, they, um, they're on here too. So I can edit videos, edit images, and then when I get home, I can put away the laptop, plug this into my big iMac, and all my work is there. Now you may be thinking, Tom, that's a bit risky. What if you lose the hard drive? Well, don't worry, look, I've got a sticker with my name on it and everything, but as well as that, my time machine on my iMac is set up to back this up. So when this is plugged into the iMac, the time machine's backing it up. So this is always backed up. But as well as that, when I'm away from home, nothing ever gets formatted. So right now, all of my footage and images and everything are on here twice, two cards, and they're on here. Um, this has changed the way I work. It's fantastic. Basically, my entire life is on this. Um, and it also means my machines, my laptop and my iMac, they run faster because they're all, all of the images and the video footage, everything's coming from this, which is uh, Thunderbolt. So it's, yeah, it's really quick. Um, 13 inch MacBook, great. Uh, let's talk about photography items that are not strictly photography. Always bring a roll of tape. You will see this being put to good use, I promise you. Compass, you always need a compass. You want to, oh, that's a nice tree over there. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, lovely, lovely. It gets dark. Ah, oh, which way is the footpath? Always take a compass reading before you set off off piste, and then you can quite comfortably find your way back. Weighs nothing, costs nothing. Need it. This is my multi tool Leatherman. Comes in very handy. Pliers, knife, screwdriver. Doesn't weigh much. Just a handy tool to have when traveling because you can always get yourself in a situation where you think, oh, if only I had a toolkit or something like that. It also has a bottle opener. You'd be surprised at how many hotel rooms don't give you a bottle opener. There we go. This is a dry bag. Um, good if you get caught in very heavy rain. I know the Manfrotto off-road comes with a rain cover, but I, do, uh, I did a hike through a river, and if I fall and the bag goes in, the rain cover's not gonna protect it, so. Dry bag. Head torch, doing sunrise and sunset photography, you need a head torch. It's just no brainer. Um, right, let's talk about vlogging uh, because there's not much to go now. I've got a GoPro Hero 4 with a GoPro three-way mount. Very good for not only taking fun selfies, um, but great for taking time lapses and pictures because it's a mini tripod and it extends and you can do all that sort of stuff. And it's just, basically a bit cheap and a bit plasticky, but the good thing is it's really lightweight and 
quite hard to damage. Uh, I have a bag full of GoPro accessories. Um, and finally, 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 is the main camera, which is this camera, which we are gonna switch to. So, I'm now shooting on the 5D Mark IV. I was shooting on this. Um, yeah, about four weeks ago, my, G, my trusty G7X dropped and smashed to pieces um, because one of these legs came off. It was sort of my fault, rough handling, and it's just an accident. And then I thought, okay, I'm gonna buy another G7, G7X, no problem, but there was an earthquake near the factory that produced the sensors for those cameras. So everywhere was out of stock. You could not get hold of a G7X. So I thought, okay, I'll buy a G7X Mark II. Same problem, can't get hold of a G7X Mark II for love nor money. Uh, very kindly Canon lent me one for a shoot I did um, in Scotland, and that was great. Um, so I found a shop whereby a G5X was available. Um, now I'd never even really thought of the G5X, it was never on my radar. Um, and then I was kind of forced into buying it because it was the only camera available on the market that I was happy to buy. Um, it's like the it's like the better version of the G7X. Um, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit chunkier. Um, and I bought it and instantly, as soon as I got it in my hands, I knew that this was, this was just a, the right decision, such a good decision to make. Um, you see, I've got the little wind muffs on there. That's great. Um, it's got a flip out screen that rotates. So again, that's good. The lens on it is superb. The autofocus is fantastic. The picture quality is amazing when you're taking stills. Um, although it's a bit heavier than the G7X Mark II, it's, it's just nothing crazy. Uh, it's got little dials on it. I don't know, it's just, it's a really, really good camera. There is one big annoying problem with it though. It's got a viewfinder, okay? Yeah, great, love the viewfinder. Big advocate of the electronic viewfinder on these small cameras. Um, but it's got this little sensor on it, right? So the, the idea is, Let's have a look here. The idea is, right, there's the, there's, the, there's the screen, and then when you put your eye to the screen, it senses your eye and the screen goes off, right? But when you're trying to frame um, a shot and you bring your hand in to adjust the settings or anything, as soon as you bring your hand in, the screen goes off. And that's really annoying because you can't disable that. And even worse, if you want to set up a shot so you put your camera on let's say a i don't know a tree trunk coming out of a tree log right so say my hand is a wall or a tree trunk yeah and you put the camera down like that to take a selfie or a video and the screen goes off so you can't back this up against the wall and use the viewfinder at the same time the uh, the screen at the same time really annoying and as far as i'm aware i did only have a quick look as far as I'm aware, and please, you love to correct me, um, and please do correct me, but I can't disable that, really annoying. Anyway, other than that, the G5X is by far one of the best compact cameras I've ever had. It's better than the G7X, it's better than the G7X Mark II, although I think it's slightly more expensive, I don't know. Uh, this is a little gorilla pod, this is great, this is what I do all my vlogging on, and uh, yeah, it's just handy, weighs nothing. Um, I record my audio separately on a Zoom H1 audio recorder and a uh, Rode SmartLav. Yes, Rode gave me this. Um, and that's it. The reason I do that, if it's windy or anything like that, um, it's good to have a backup audio. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Hello. No, you can't dominate me. Get your paw off. <laughs> this isn't my dog. This is just, this is just, the, I don't know what this is. This is a random dog that keeps running up to us. Um, so that's it. That's everything. That's my stuff. I hope you've got some hints and tips. I know this video is a little bit long, but thank you so much for watching. Um, and I hope you've taken something away. Everything, although I rushed through it, um, everything's listed in the description below. Um, and if you've got any questions about anything in particular because although I tried to show everything I didn't go in that into that much detail 
uh, please do leave a comment and I promise I'll try my best um, to answer it although I, I don't answer everything uh, if I'm too busy and get lots of comments uh, so thank you for watching and I think it's time to get some rest and enjoy Hawaii all right cheers